Te Harotō, which lies on the Napier Taupo Road, was one of the main villages of the small Ngāti Hine Uru tribe. Its marae has links with the famous Māori leader, Te Kōti, and the Paimārire faith. Hawke's Bay saw little fighting during the New Zealand wars of the 1860s. This was mainly because there were relatively few contentious European settlements and because of the influence that land purchase agent and superintendent of Hawke's Bay province, Donald Maclean, had with key Māori chiefs in the area. However, tensions were simmering beneath the surface. For some Māori, these tensions found an outlet in the Paimārire or Hoho, an independent Māori Christian religion. Most Europeans and many Māori were opposed to Paimārire, which means goodness and peace, because of the violent actions carried out in its name. But Paimārire continued to attract converts, especially when the government began to confiscate Māori land. The 1865 ritual killing of missionary Karl Volkner in the Bay of Plenty by Hoho followers shocked many people. He was hanged from a tree near his church in Oporteki by members of his own congregation. The government used the killing as a reason to take harsh action against Paimārire and to confiscate land. The Ngāti Hineuru tribe were followers of Paimārire. The tribe's leaders travelled around Hawke's Bay on evangelical missions with some success. At a meeting house near Hastings in 1866, Reverend Samuel Williams found Te Hapuku, a high-ranking Ngāti Kahungunu chief, sitting dejectedly outside. He reportedly told Williams that the people in the packed meeting house, who were being preached to by Panapa, a Ngāti Hineuru spiritual leader, had gone mad and would not listen to reason. Williams is said to have won the support of the people back when he went inside and destroyed the arguments of Panapa. Later that year, a party of about 80 hohos set out from Te Haroto with the intention of attacking Napier. When they arrived at the fenced village of Omarunui, near Napier, they were warned to return home or else they would be attacked. Meanwhile, preparations were being made by Napier settlers to repel a possible attack. A militia of about 200 soldiers marched to Omarunui. A representative went into the village and demanded the surrender of the hohos within an hour. Otherwise, they would be fired upon. The Hohos were undecided about what to do, but refrained from any act of violence. The militia surrounded the village and fired on the Hohos. I saw Nikura shot in the body. Two bullets struck him. A number of us retreated across the swamp and took to the hills, but we were surrounded there by cavalry and forced to surrender. Many Hohos were killed, including Panapa, their spiritual leader. Casualties were heavy, and eventually the Hohos surrendered. Almost all the party were killed, wounded, or captured. All of us who could walk were marched to Napier, and the wounded were taken to hospital there. Then we were shipped off to the Chatham Islands in a steamer. Only one of my comrades succeeded in returning to Te Haroto. After the Hoho defeat, Napier was never attacked again. Despite suppressing the Hohos from Ngāti Hineuru, the government kept an eye on Te Haroto. In 1869, they built a military blockhouse near the Marae during the so-called Reign of Terror by the Māori resistance leader Te Kōti. After he had been pardoned in 1883, Te Kōti visited the Marae at Te Haroto and named its meeting house Rongomai, which means peace. <laughs>